I'm Jane Farnham from Great British Speakers and I'm here today chatting to the very lovely mental health and wellness speaker Shona Hirons. I have said that correctly, haven't I, Shona? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today and giving us a bit of your time. You're welcome. It's nice to be here. Now, as you might expect at Great British Speakers, we have quite a number of amazing people who have suffered life-changing events in their lives. But Shona, crikey, you'll probably be near the top of that list for the sheer number of challenges that you've overcome and navigated so successfully. But you're still here smiling today. So tell us a bit about your the what you've had to endure through through the years. I often say that my my life is a bit like another sequel of the Final Destination movies, <laughs> but I can laugh about it now. And if you can't laugh about yourself, then, you know, who can? Um, but yeah, in a nutshell, I was born six weeks prematurely. And apparently on the day I was born, my dad was told, we'll do our best to save your wife, but your daughter will not survive the night. Well, 48 years on, I'm still here. So I'm, I've done something right. Um, and I actually grew up with hardly any any issues at all. No, you know, just the normal chicken pox and measles, but nothing, nothing bad. Um, when I was 18, I got stung by a scorpion and spent 10 days in a Turkish hospital and had to have the sting sucked out of my arm by one of the people by the pool. And, um, and she saved my life. That was quite dramatic. When I was 22 and I was in university, I think I just finished all my studying. Um, that was when I first started experiencing sort of quite quite a lot of stress uh, in my life. And I collapsed one day and got rushed to hospital and I'd had a mini stroke. And for the next 10 years, I was put on quite strong medication, blood thinning drugs and was told I wouldn't be, ha be able to have a family. So I, I really pushed myself into my career and, and, and got quite senior as a lawyer very quickly. And I, I had to learn how to accept that. But then when I was 32, through my own research, when I was doing my paddy diving course, um, I discovered that I had a hole in my heart, which was there from birth. And it just hadn't been discovered. And that is what had caused me, apparently, to have the mini stroke. So within weeks, I was having that closed up and thankfully was able to come off the medication and had my now fantastic nearly 15 year old daughter. But that was when my priorities around work changed. And this is when I'd say the worst part of my life happened. And for the next best part of 10 years, I really suffered with burnout. But I had no idea that that's what it was. And it crept up so quickly. I found myself trying to prove myself even more, working harder and longer, but not smarter. And, and it ended up with me having a complete breakdown. Um, and and that was absolutely awful. And I hope nobody listening ever gets to that stage because it can take such a long time to recover from that. Um, I, I remember going to hospital and having every test done under the sun, only to then be told, oh, Mrs. Hirons, we've got good news. Your test results are normal. There's nothing wrong with you. But I felt so far from normal. I'd never felt so unwell in my entire life. And I remember coming home and it taking every ounce of energy for me to get up the stairs and crawl into bed. And I stayed there for the next three weeks, unable to speak. And and even after that, I still didn't know what to do. And I didn't have the right support. And my, my employers weren't um, supportive. They were just like, well, there's nothing wrong with you. Come on, what's wrong with you? When are we gonna get the old Shona back? And I've never felt so pathetic and worthless in my life. Um, and I finally did get support and very slowly just started to set some small achievable goals. Even just getting dressed some days was, was something to celebrate. Um, and eventually it led to me having a life changing accident nearly six, well, over six years ago, where I was just rushing about as always trying to get to work, working best part of 80 hour weeks. And I would, I would cycle to work in the morning and, I don't even know what happened. Apparently I hit a wet patch on the road and I ended up having to have, uh, I spent two weeks in, in, in an induced coma, was told I was unlikely to survive apparently, um, but I did. I had to have major facial reconstructive surgery. I'm actually 93. <laughs> <laughs> you look cracking. <laughs> I have to add a bit of humor. If I, as I said, if I can't laugh at myself, but that that next year was a really, really hard part of my life. Um, 
trying to rebuild, learn how to walk, even talk, even eat and drink properly again, because I'd had my um, my face rebuilt, my jaw pinned back together. Um, and it was really hard. And I had nine months off work. And I did return, but I just wasn't the same. And, and I realized that, you know, if that had been my last day on earth, would I be happy with what I've achieved? And my answer was absolutely not. You know, I, I think I read a book um, by Stephen Covey at the time, um, and he his book was uh, was about how to have an extraordinary life, seven different ways. And I remember just resonating with everything he said, and and that was one of the things that came up in his book. And um, and I decided to leave the legal world behind, and I started my own business. Uh, I started to become very goal orientated, and just wanted to be simply better every day and and help to end that stigma around mental health in particular in the workplace because I was definitely treated differently when I was diagnosed with episodic depression and that shouldn't happen. So tell me about that um when you had your accident had you recovered fully mentally before that had happened? Probably not if I'm honest um I think that I'd my mindset was in a much better place. I think I'd already made the decision in my head, you know, there's more to life than just working long hours every single day. And and I was starting to rebuild my life. I was starting to build those close relationships with, with my family, with my friends, my loved ones again, myself, most importantly, which was a which was something I'd lost for a long time. Um and I think probably my heart wasn't really in it when I when I went back to to the workplace, but just just that constant judgment that I felt. And, and when I was diagnosed with episodic depression, I was given three options. I was told that I could either go on a performance improvement plan. Um, and if I didn't recover within a month, then I'd be facing a disciplinary hearing or I could go on an unpaid sabbatical until I was better or I could leave. And by that point, I was a lot stronger. Helpful options, eh? Yeah, I, I was a lot stronger by then. I, I knew that they couldn't do that and that, you know, there was more for me out there. And and I, I, I was starting to believe in myself. And I do honestly believe now that once you start believing in yourself, amazing things start to happen. Um, and and they did, and my business started doing well. I st I just threw everything into my into my business with hardly even a penny to start it, but you know I I did it myself, um, started sharing my story, wrote a book, um, and just as I was starting to to do well, uh, I was diagnosed with uterine cancer and had to have a total abdominal hysterectomy in 2019. And um, and that then plunged me straight into early menopause. So that's sort of another thing that I've dealt with. But I've been... It's almost like you've had a massive, great big thing to overcome in every decade of your life. Yeah, I know. I mean, they, there seems to be a theme like 22, 32. And my accident happened when I was 42. I've got wow. three and a half years till I'm 52. I'm like, not sure about <laughs> that. <I'm in. laughs> Stay wrapped up in bubble wrap for the whole year now. It's... it's um, no, Before it's... we come on to all your achievements, Shona, I just want to talk uh, one more question about sort of mental health and, you know, because you've, you've felt that, you've been there, you've been at your lowest depth. Mm -hmm. Do you think mental health can, because, you you know, you said you couldn't get out of bed, you struggled to motivate, do you think it can show itself in physical uh, ill health as well? I mean, I, I genuinely believe the two are so interrelated that you, you can't be physically healthy if you're mentally unwell I, 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 I do you do you agree with that is that something absolutely that yeah I do I think there's a very close close link and you know from from my own symptoms and I, I didn't realize this was related to my mental health but you know I the, the panic attacks for example they were coming more frequently and I would get this intense burning feeling in my feet which felt like they were in a bunch of stinging nettles and my hands would literally claw in on themselves and they would feel like they were being crushed and then they would go completely completely numb for sometimes a couple of hours but the worst about three days and I didn't know that that was linked to my my mental health and I had I had loads of tests done I had brain scans blood tests something called nerve conduction tests which were like a form of torture and every time the test results came back as as normal um 
so again, I didn't know that that's what it was, but I've spoken to other people and some people have had head to toe psoriasis as a result of, you know, extreme stress. Some people have had strokes, you know, it can, it can manifest in different ways, extreme headaches that can arise I mean if you don't I always believe that if you're not proactive with your mental health then your physical health can really de deteriorate over yeah. time yeah but did you build up your own coping mechanisms around that time and what were they like what helped you yeah I, I I would honestly say I mean we're all different so you know it's not a one shoe fits all but for me it was it was actually when I when I walked out of my job um and this was 10 years ago uh, this is the, the first time that I kind of experienced a form of burnout. Um, and I honestly felt so worthless, but I started to go back to the gym and find my love for exercise. And I, in my teens, I'd swam for my country. So I was always into my fitness, but I'd lost it for a long time. Um, and someone at the gym suggested that I train to become a spin instructor and then a personal trainer. And I couldn't imagine for a second sitting in front of the studio on a bike you know, instructing a class, but I did. And that was the start of me rebuilding my confidence and, you know, getting that buzz, the music, seeing other people loving it as well. You know, that, that was brilliant. Um, and just talking, just finally talking about it and realizing I wasn't on my own. Yeah. So have you, um, I know that you obviously talk about it, you've got great experience. Have you got professional qualifications in this area? I have done some. I've done um, my up to level three in counselling skills just to, to add a bit more credibility to what I do. Not that I believe that that's what makes me good at what I do. Um, I do believe it's my lived experience. I've also done my master's in NL NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, and I've done various mental health courses, uh, mental health first aid, suicide awareness, uh, just, just for my own benefit, but also to add that extra credibility. Yeah, sometimes it gives you that confidence that you know, you know you, you, you've got the tools to help people aside from your lived experience. Yeah. So, Obviously, we, we've just broached upon your um, business, uh, Mindset in Motion. Now, tell me all about this. How did it come about and where are you now? Well, Mindset came from, again, part of my recovery was about changing my mindset and having a positive mindset and finding positives in every day, no matter what happens. So that's where the word mindset came from. And then motion is about moving forward. Uh, I've got a sign behind my desk, which says, don't look backwards, we're not going that way. And I lived in the past so much and so many people I speak to are the same. So for me, that's how that name came about. It's all about having the right mindset and moving forwards. And so what, what do you actually, what does the business do and, and how do you, how do you make a change? So I mainly now do corporate wellbeing. I've worked with a number of global companies. I've been lucky enough to, to have that, that privilege where I've worked as their resilience coach with all their staff where people get to book a safe space with me and have a conversation. And then I do a report to the leadership team at the end of each month with the general things that I've been um, helping people with but then also some recommendations for any change and then that's also developed then into me putting together a workshop for leadership development on mental health and and that's been going really well but the most the thing I love doing the most is my my talks in in organizations just raising that awareness so tell me about your talks, because in in terms of the health and wellness space, I don't suppose there's not much you don't there's not much you don't cover. My I called my talk broken to bionic, and you know my story will make people laugh, it will make people cry, but ultimately it's a story of hope and resilience. And you know, and I said it earlier on, but I honestly believe that once you start believing in yourself, amazing things start to happen. And we do have a choice. And I do also believe that tough times make tougher people. So when I deliver my talk, I do provide quite a lot of takeaways, um, especially towards the end of my talk, because it's not just about me. I want people to resonate with just the girl next door and realize that this can happen to absolutely anyone. And also, although I mainly talk about burnout, prolonged stress, which is what it is, that I don't believe it is just work, which 
uh, which causes burnout. There can be various different things going on in your life. And I know in particular with me, you know, we had financial worries um, that was impacting my relationship. I wasn't able to go out and in turn that affected my sleep. And yes, then that did have an impact on work. So I think there's a number of different things that can cause burnout. Yeah, we're trying to be all things to all people, aren't mm -hmm. we, all the time? It's just we lead such busy lives. So so to sometimes just to sit back and, and, and take a look at it is really important. Is there a I know you were talking about key takeaways, but is there is there can can you give me an example of those? And can you give me an example of where you're really proud to have made a difference in yeah. a company or within a company or within an individual? My motto is you need to slow down in order to speed up. And I genuinely believe that. And I, th I would, I, I was thinking of this um, earlier on, like, what's my proudest thing? And there's been lots, but I think for me, my proudest thing was being invited back during Mental Health Awareness Week in 2019 to the company where I'd had my breakdown. And for six years, I wasn't able to go anywhere near that office without having a full on meltdown, a panic attack, you know, where my pulse would get racing, my breathing was all over the place, I'd be crying with uncontrollable tears. And they invited me back there. And the person that I, you know, I didn't want to face the person who I felt had caused me problems when I was there. Um, I knew he still worked there. And I didn't know if he was going to come to the talk. And I, I asked a friend of mine who does lots of public speaking what he would do. And he said, you know what, do it. Otherwise, you'll regret it. And I did do it. And, and I used all of my coping mechanisms, my breathing techniques. I listened to some really, really great music before I went in, which got me in the right headspace. And I delivered my talk with confidence, had amazing feedback, and I felt I had closure. And one thing I would say, and I won't say the name of the company, but one thing I would say about them is in that time since I'd left, they'd now trained a lot of their staff to become mental health first aiders. They had little breakout rooms for people to go if they needed to come away from their desk and have a, you know, a few minutes, which was something that, you know, they were now championing. And I thought if they learn anything from my experience and that's what they've done, brilliant. So I'd say that's my proudest one. Oh, that's excellent. And what gives you the biggest buzz about speaking? Because I can see the energy oozing out of you. But do you really love standing up? I mean, so I've presented my whole life, yeah, in front of camera. I can, but putting lay, laying myself bare on stage is not something I do. I'm normally presenting somebody else's product or or or, or whatever whatever service. Um, but, you know, to stand there, is that something that really gives you, spurs you on? It does, yeah. And it wasn't always because I did have that imposter syndrome over why would somebody just want me to do it? And and I've realised that I am just, like I said, the girl next door and it could happen to anyone. And, and I think it's so important to be able to speak out. And I wish I'd had someone maybe like myself to listen to when I was really struggling because it might have prevented it from getting to a really bad place. Well, Shona, it's been absolutely delightful talking with you today. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you very much. And if you'd like to book Shona to discuss, well, pretty much anything in the health and wellness space, mental health, physical health, overcoming adversity, female health and the menopause, burnout, leadership, you name it, you can talk about it. So do give us a shout. Uh, speak to Steve or myself on 017 or you can email us, bookings at greatbritishspeakers.com.